Microphone. Microphone. Hello, everyone. We are live. Hi. Hello, hello, hello. Um, so, minor news, but I'm going to start playing as we talk about it. But, uh, so, we decided because, um, because Paper Mario Origami King, the Origami King? I can't remember. Yeah. But that is coming out on July 17th, two weeks from now. My birthday! Hell yeah. So, we, um, I was already planning on doing Paper Mario starting on Monday, but now my goal is going to be finish all of, uh, the, the first three Paper Mario games because I don't have emulators for Color Splash. I don't have a way to capture 3DS. Maybe in the future I'll find those. But, uh, yeah, I'm gonna play Paper Mario, Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door, and Super Paper Mario all before July 17th. And then we will play Paper Mario Origami King. It's gonna be good, y'all. Ooh, yeah. I don't know. I'm gonna have to figure out how to pace myself. I'm gonna check out um, timetobeat.com and uh, try and get a good estimate of what um, what I should time budget for each day. Because I only have, like, ten days, I think? Let's see, yeah. uh, if nine weekdays and two weekend- yeah, yeah, nine days. Or ten days, so that means that I need to devote, like, three and a third to each game, probably? Although I think the, the second game was, like, way longer than the first one, right? Uh, eh. Yeah. And I have an, uh... Shit, how do I drop a bomb? There it is. Um, I haven't played a lot of that one, so I don't really know how long it goes. I've watched part uh, of the Grumps playthrough of it, but I, I didn't watch much farther than I've already played. I've played both a few times now. Mm -hmm. So, they're... I mean, it's one of those things where... Like, once you know what to do, it's pretty easy to play real quickly. Sure. But the first time, you know, I would give each one about maybe four days. Okay, because I have played most of the first one. Yeah. Um, And it's, I've played a bit of the second one. I almost feel like we should really push it and do its spiritual predecessor. Uh, Mario RPG? Yeah. Um, I mean, I could find an emulator of that. Is that on the Super NES yeah. thing that comes with Nintendo Switch Online? I don't know. I don't think so. Hmm. It might. If it does, I'm going to have to I honestly, it. um, I'll just check right now because I'm playing this on my Switch. So, brief interlude, folks. We're going to go into uh, all software... I don't think I need to do that, actually, because I can find it here. Let's see. Uh, Nintendo Entertainment. No, Super Nintendo. That's the one I need. Super yeah. Super, Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, I got to clip. I'll close Binding of Isaac. Whatever. I'll just start another run. I probably wasn't going to last very long anyways. I'm not super, super great at that game, and it is very hard on purpose. It's mostly about like the yeah. ridiculous, the ridiculous weapon combos. Okay, let's see what we got. Operation Logic Bomb, uh, the thing that Super Puzzle Fighter was based on. Wild Guns, Smash Tennis, Pop in Twin B, Breath of Fire Two, Kirby Superstar, Star Fox Two, which uh, before was only released on the SNES Classic. I'm pretty sure. Uh, Super Punch Out, F Zero, Demon's Crest, Breath of Fire One, Brawl Brothers, Joe and Mac Two, Lost in the Tropics, Kirby's Dream Course, Kirby's Dream Land Three, Pilot Wings, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, Earth Defense Force, Stunt Race FX, Star Fox, Super Mario Kart, Super Mario World, Super Mario World Two, Yoshi's Island, Super Metroid, um, Super Tennis, Super Soccer, Link to the Past. Nope. I would say, if you haven't gotten it already, um, I could honestly, I, I have a family plan, and I think I have a, a slot or two open that I could put you on, and then you could play these games. I have that already. Oh, you have it already? Yeah, with me, Maddie, and my son. 
Mm, okay, then yeah, you should have the Super NES I do. online. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I don't think the game was on there. No, they add more, but it was monthly, and now it's only every, like, three to four months. Yeah, no, but you were saying, was it on there? And I was like, I don't, no, I doubt it. Yeah, I checked. Oh. I checked. Yeah. Didn't work That's what out. I was trying to tell you. But you didn't want to listen. I got excited, okay? Please. Please leave me be. Uh, I can I can set you up with the uh, emulator for that. Yeah, no, I can, I mean I can find one. I just um, I'd prefer to do it officially if I can because. Yeah, oh, fair, absolutely. But... As as far as emulation goes, it's like I I don't have a moral problem with it exactly, but if I can get the official version, it tends yeah. to just be like it tends to run better and everything. That's my rule as well. If I can play it. If I can go to the, like, provider's website or, you know, whatever and buy the game and play it, I absolutely will prefer to do that. But there's games, like, you're never going to find a way to legally buy it today yeah. unless it's third hand by now. Well, the thing I've I've heard with privacy, or piracy, quote-unquote, or emulation, um, there was a guy who, he does some really good videos that are, like... Honestly, remind me a lot of Sequelitis about game design. I can't remember his name. He's like an Irish fella. Um, but he did one about video game quote-unquote piracy. And his point was that a gamer is... A, there's like a, a threshold everybody has of how inconvenient the piracy process can be to make it more convenient to do the official release. So like... Um, in the case of, like, SNES, it's like, I would totally just use their SNES online because it'll just be more convenient. But yeah. if I don't have to, like, spend a bunch of money on a Super Nintendo and a copy of the game and everything that's, like, hundreds of dollars all told, it's, um, it's gonna be, like, just, just more convenient probably. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Corey has Super Mario RPG and he has an SNES but I, w I would not have a way to capture it right well technically legally emulators are perfectly legal right it's the ROMs that you know pirating right. that right because Bleem a PlayStation emulator for the PC that sold legitimately in stores Got oh. sued, got sued by PlayStation, and the courts found in favor of Bleem. Really? So, the only thing that's illegal about emulation is if you pirate the ROMs or the game files, yeah. but the emulation itself is fine. And being that there's ways to get those files from legitimate copies of a game, right? You know, not not as easy with cartridge games, but it's possible yeah you have to get uh, like you have to either get specific devices that can like input it and read that or you have to know how to get in there and without destroying the game um like connect it to a computer right and so that stuff is perfectly legal um so my thing is if i actually have a physical copy by getting a digital copy, I am not, you know, I'm just cutting, adding a middleman, you know, like, yeah, I have it. I have a copy on my shelf. I'm going to get an emulation of it too. Cause you know, I mean, it's like the same thing as the right to repair, which yeah. has been removed many times. Like if you buy a John Deere tractor, Oh, you yeah, have yeah, to yeah. sign an agreement. Yeah, you know about this. Um, but yep. for anybody who hasn't heard about this, when you buy a John Deere tractor, you have to sign an agreement that you will only get it serviced by John Deere licensed repair places, and you cannot repair it yourself. Yeah. And so it, it's hundreds of dollars if your tractor won't start in the morning. Right off 
right off the bat to get somebody out there. Yeah. And then it's hundreds more for whatever time they spend there. And then it's hundreds more for whatever it is they do. And the thing is too is if on a tablet. If that if that money was going more towards that worker, I'd be like, yeah, totally. People deserve a better wage. But in reality, the majority of that money is going to be going back to John Deere corporate. Yeah. That's so, that's that sucks. They didn't fucking earn that. We must seize the means of production. So what some people are doing is turning to Russian uh, hackers. Damn. To do it. Yeah. I didn't hear about that. Holy shit. Yeah. Uh, John Oliver did a bit about it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I heard about it on a podcast um, a while ago. Uh, a very good yeah. podcast called Geek Nights from two two tech professionals living in New York. And they also talk about like anime and other games and stuff. Yeah, so what they'll do is they'll pay a couple hundred dollars to a Russian hacker to, you know, unlock their John Deere. And that's part of the right to, you know, repair thing mm. they're going for, is the right to do that without having to be technically, you know, breaking the law. Yeah, because, yeah, there's no reason they shouldn't be allowed to do that. It's just the agreement. Yeah. Um. It, and that's the thing too. When I say like I want to play Sticker Star on here, my plan would not be to um, like get an emulator because fuck trying to emulate 3ds. That's gonna be oh, yeah. nuts. I would rather play my legitimate copy on my DS and use a capture card. And it used to be um, for like. DS and 3DS, you the, you would have to go and like buy it, like get it modded and stuff. And there was only like one guy who did it and can't do it anymore. But now, if you go on eBay, and I I'm not saying I know whether or not this is legit. It, it they have a lot of reviews. They have a lot of like positive reviews from what seem like legitimate customers that this is that this will is actually how it works. But they basically say um. You will ship them your 3DS, and then they will mod it to have wireless capture. Like, via Bluetooth. And that's... That's that, cool? That sounds so cool, but, like, it sounds a little too cool? Because it's, like, 80 bucks. Would... And it's, like, I'm nervous, though, because, like, what's guaranteeing that it's going to a... do anything? You could always try getting a second-hand 3DS first. Yeah. And well, I don't even... It has to be a 3DS XL or a 2DS XL, and I only have the original DS, so that's the thing, is if I wanted to do this, I would either have to wait until they start, because um, they also have the option sometimes that sells out really quick of just, you buy a D 3DS that's already modded. So you pay for the 3DS, and you pay for what the modding service would be, just all in one package. Um, which would probably be what I do, since I don't have a 3DS. So if I get it, I'd have to get a 3DS to even do it with. Or a uh, uh, 3DS XL specifically. So it'd be a whole pain in the ass. But I do, as I've said before, I love handhelds. And I'd love to do more like handheld stuff on here. Um, but it's uh, I'd just rather be able to play it on the actual handheld if at all possible. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. And it'd probably be the easiest way in general, so. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. Hmm. Sticker Star is the second worst in the series. Oh, yeah, no, I've I've played it. I've Or at least I've tried to play it. And then I get to the entrance of every time. It's like I play through it, and I'm like, okay, this is, like, kind of boring as far as these go. And it's, like taking a long time but maybe it's going to get good and then i get to the the pyramid where you have to put in specific like uh stickers and i'm just like i don't feel like going back and grinding for those six specific stickers i'm out of here yeah um color splash was kind of like that it was very similar but i think it played better i honestly think everybody gives color splash shit for being the worst in the series right uh it's not 
Super Paper Mario is the worst. You say this... You say this, but we will see. Because to me, it seems the most intriguing in terms of gameplay. But mm -hmm. I've never seen there being any companions, which is like one of the more important parts. Uh huh. So that is that is disappointing. Whoa. Uh huh. Yeah, it is, huh? Yeah. Uh huh. It looks also like um. Uh, an Origami King. There's not going to be companions, really. I don't know. I saw what looked like some in one of the shots. But... Right. There was like one shot where there was like a a ba bomb following them, and not like a specific, like how when they you have like the Goomba companion, they have like specific headwear and stuff. Yeah. But like it just looked like a generic ba bomb. I mean, we'll see, you know. I'm not and that was the too only shot tough. I could spot where you looked like you were, like, with somebody, I think. There might have been one with, like, a Koopa, but it, it seemed like... It didn't seem like there were many options in that case. Could be wrong, though. Certainly. There, we'll find out in a couple weeks when I start playing it. And I'm sure you will play it, too, and get through it way faster than me. Yeah, I mean, I still think Super Paper Mario is the fucking worst. You're right. I think Sticker Star is second worst. Then Color Splash. Mm. And then and then Thousand Year Door, because I still think the first one is the best one. It's pretty good. It was definitely a super strong start for the series. Yeah. I mean, I technically will still count Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars as the first in the series. Sure. And where would you put that one? Uh, that one, for sentimental value alone, puts it at the top. Hmm. Because I got that game very young and fell in love with it. Sure. Um, like, yeah, it's it's important to admit that nostalgia will always be a factor, but it's still like a valid reason to enjoy something. Yeah, but if I were to compare it to 64, mm. I have to give it to Legend of the Seven Stars uh, just because I think the companion characters were far more interesting because they were not, like, Mario in the first characters. two games, well, like, they weren't Mario enemies that just yes. happened to be on your side for, you know, two games. Um I liked it better because it was completely unique creations, and I feel like that worked better. Uh, sure. The closest, the closest I can think of anybody getting that in the first two uh, Paper Mario titles would maybe be Madame Flurry. Hmm. Okay. I think she, I think she's the only one that I can think of. Um, she's a ghostly clout. Yeah. I guess Madame Flurry, because I was gonna say no, no, like there's a, but I realize she's a boo. So, I yeah. like, I like Mallow. Mallow is such a sweetie. And everybody's trying to get uh, what Giovanni? What's his name? We Gino. G Gino, yeah. Giovanni. I don't know. Pokemon I was like, I like just added like a syllable. I'm yeah, just saying it sounded like that. Gino. No, oh, I get it. What about him? I everybody's been wanting to get him in Smash. Eee, like he's always like... whenever they're like, "Oh, he needs to be in Smash." He the, the, these characters need to be in Smash. He's always like top three in anybody's list. Okay, so I would love that, but. Nintendo and Square, for some reason, are just not willing to work together on that one. That's fair. Um, I mean, it it was yeah, it was surprising to see Final Fantasy stuff coming to Nintendo because, especially after they screwed Nintendo over with Final Fantasy VII by going to PlayStation instead. Um, yeah, and that was their like biggest one for a long time, and especially after Final Fantasy uh, VI. I mean, what we would consider three in the U.S. Um, was, like, also a huge hit. So, like, yeah, they, like, ducked out 
at the time when they had the most value. And that's, I, I can agree a little bit that that's kind of scummy that they decided to lose all loyalty once they knew they had, like, negotiation power. Mm, well, all I know is that it's sh shaky ground at best right now. Right. So. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's a ring of flies. I have not played... Similar to FTL, I have not played... Um, more recent Binding of Isaac, so I'm running into a lot of stuff I have never seen before. I also, like, I'm also playing, instead of the original Binding of Isaac, I'm playing Binding of Isaac Afterbirth, which is the, I want to say, third one? The one that went to consoles. I never played any of them. It's pretty good. It's, uh, it's just like a, a basically, it's, um... It's got Legend of Zelda like uh like floor designs basically. So like level design based on like the dungeons in the original Legend of Zelda or right. and then um and then it's like a twin stick shooter, basically. Yeah, that's two combinations that I don't like, so I can understand. The main thing, the main appeal to it, I mean, other than like Edmund McMillan's like really weird unique um arts and design stylings graphically um the uh the 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 thing is that all of the upgrades do weird shit so as you upgrade your weapon um you can end up with just ridiculous combinations that like with just one more addition could go from being Ba barely nothing to just world ending and then with one more addition complete just completely useless it's just complete madness and it's pretty specifically in that case like pretty short the way an nes game would be where like even no matter what you get it's only going to last for half an hour so you don't have to a worry about conserving it and b you don't have to get bummed out if you uh get a combination that doesn't work very well. Eh. That's... Eh. Eh. Uh, like... Pill. Shit. Controversial oh. comment. I don't really like Legend of Zelda that much. Really? So, yeah. I just don't like it. Like any of them? Or just the first one? Any of them. Even the, like... Did you play Breath of the Wild? I watched Maddie play it, and I watched other people play it. Mm. It does nothing for me. Really? It's it does interesting, because, like, you also said that about Lord of the Rings, and, like, I'm, like, not a fan of most fantasy things, but at the very least, like, Lord of the Rings and Legend of Zelda are the kind of fantasy that, like, I can get into. Or even, like, um, looking at Star uh, South Park's The Stick of Truth, like, the... the uh, Oh, I think that's a spoiler. I don't know if I want to spoil that for anybody who hasn't played. Um, but yeah, like that kind of fantasy, the the like really ass kicking fantasy. I love that shit. I mean, I don't dislike fantasy. It's I just don't like those particular ones. Like, okay, uh, let me ask you this: um, Did you read? Because you read Penny Arcade. Um, the, did you remember Thornwatch? No. Th uh, it was like the it was like a uh, a sp specifically like druid fantasy, where it was based around like a lot of nature and stuff. I don't remember much of anything. It was one of those. It was one of those mini series that they've done. No, no. I I know they've done them. I just don't remember them. Okay. You know what's something you might like. By the way, um, if you don't already listen to it, is a downloadable content, which is the podcast that Mike and Jerry do, where it's basically just them brainstorming the next strip, and so you just get to like listen to their entire like creative process. They're each about like half an hour long, because I mean it's only a three-panel strip, so it doesn't take them that long, and as far as I can tell, the majority of the work for the comic. Um, 
like time wise ends up being Mike just drawing it. Yeah. Because the writing Art? process they work on together and just get through real quick. So uh, I'm playing a game with a friend of mine, Iggy, called Sticks. Ah, uh, yes. Where you uh, drop matchsticks onto a plate. Yeah. And you uh, you determine a number. And you ask the other person what the number is. Mm. And uh, how long did it take? How obvious did I make it when I told, played the game with you and well, you still didn't? <laughs> that's the thing, though, okay? It's not so much about that. It's that the whole thing is very misleading intentionally. Like, the, the, whole, the whole trick is designed in a way to be a trick. Yeah. So... <laughs> Do you want to tell our viewers what the trick was? I, uh, I, I'm, I'm a little uh, distracted by the game. I think I don't think I could do it justice. So, the answer in the matches, they they point in random directions. So you're thinking, oh, is it the greatest number that overlap, or the number that don't touch any other, or this, that, or the other, and it absolutely has nothing to do with the matches. It's when you adjust the plate, how many fingers you are using to touch the plate. So if you touch it with one, the answer is one. If you use your whole hand, five. If you use both hands, ten. If you use one finger from each hand, two. So... How obvious were the last two clues I gave you and Coco Iggy? I mean, they're obvious in hindsight, but when you're like actually they're <laughs> being actively misdirected. <laughs> so I go tap the tape or the plate. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five. And Iggy's like just whoosh. <laughs> it's such a cruel game. It's such a cruel game. I love it. Yeah. The cruelty of it is wonderful. My god, Twitter is popping off right now. What's going on? I don't know. There's some shit. Oh, there tends to be. People getting arrested. Yeah. A plushie with hand sanitizer. Like, in it, or? Like, sitting on a medical cart in a nursing room hallway looking place. Hmm. Uh, some attorney believes the person who killed her is the same one who harassed her and walked in on her when she was showering. What the fuck? I... I Oof. Let's leave, yeah. let's leave that one off stream. <laughs> Because, like, I don't mind discussing serious topics on occasion. I don't think, like, violent murder and assault is something I, uh, no, I want I'm... to really discuss on stream. I absolutely agree. I just could not believe that that was there. Like, whoa. Yeah, I mean, I'm almost never shocked at this point, though, because shit's gone so sideways that... If you could tell me anything and I'd believe you. I stole Satan's personal Bible and got closer to him as a confidant. Yeah, obviously. Tell me something I don't know. <laughs> oh, I need some water. Hmm. <sighs> I am I am gearing myself up for these Paper Mario runs. I gotta say, cause uh, ooh, it's gonna be it's gonna be uh a lot, and I mean, like I'm going to do my best to schedule it out to still have like the healthiest life I can at the time, but uh, I I I feel like it's gonna be it's gonna get stressful. Uh, not too bad, honestly. Well, keep in mind, um, I don't really like 
turn-based RPG, and even with some ones I do like, like the Mario and Luigi, Pokemon, or Paper Mario, ah, uh, ooh, there's still like a point I get in there where I'm like, it just feels like drud drudgery. <sighs> just, just slog. Uh, Paper Mario tends to balance that really well. The first yeah. two, anyway. Oh yeah, no, I'm saying like, I, I still, like, I am oh, willing to tolerate oh. those ones. They're way more fun, but there is still like a point, usually towards like the the like end of the second act, sort of like post middle segment, where I'm just like, I just, I just want to get through this, man. I haven't been excited uh, or happy in a few years. Uh, yeah, I think I can leave. Um, I... How much do you know about Super Paper Mario? I've played the very beginning of it, and I get the general conceit, but, um, I've also seen, like, way later in the game, and I don't quite get how it ends up where it's at later in the game. Yeah. It sucks. You're saying this. I got to... I got to a point in the game where, like, there's literally just a boss rush, and right. it's not very original, it's not very interesting. I mean, yeah, it's a boss rush. No, no, I mean, like, it's especially bad. And I just gave up. I was like, I, I can't. I've beaten this game before, but I cannot commit my soul to any more of this. It's awful. Hmm. It, it's terrible. Okay, so let's break this down. Let's 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 work some shit out here, buddy. You and me. Come on, come on. Huddle up. We got this. So this conceit of the game is that it's side-scrolling, but when you hit um, a button, it switches perspective to a more 3D, 3D plane perpendicular view that shows you stuff you couldn't see otherwise, and that's like for puzzle solving and stuff, but then the combat is still... Is the combat still turn-based? No! Right. I, I honestly... Okay. That uh, that does make it sound a little better to me, because as I said, man, turn-based, that's like... No! The, it's, it's the epitome of, of just drudgery. Yeah. So, okay, what, so what, is it that it's not turn-based that, like, you can't deal with, or what? It, it's just not good. Hmm. It's so fucking, like, you just, like, you get to a point where you, do, you don't care anymore, you, you want whoever the bad guy is to win. Wow. What's up? I forgot Maddie had a doctor's appointment. <laughs> oh no. So is everything good? Well, I forgot she had a dentist appointment. And I sent her a meme of a dentist holding a chainsaw with toothbrushes strapped to the chain. Oh no. <laughs> Looking at the kid in the chair going, oh, what's the problem now? Oh no. <laughs> oh no. That's like how um when I was a kid, I was going to like have to take a flight with my dad in the morning, and we went out and rented some videos. And it was just like, oh hey, I like Final Destination 2. Let's rent Final Destination 1. That that movie just starts with a violent plane crash. I was like, great! I'm gonna have a super fun flight tomorrow. <laughs> uh, so, I told you about those uh, rolls I bought that were peach flavored. And yes. I was like, I don't think. I, and I was like, I'm not sure if I actually broke it. If it's you know gone off. I definitely didn't do it right the first time. 
Because really? this time I did. Yeah, like, it almost had a cooling sensation on the lips. Mm. Like, uh, like, um, um, like a, like an analgesic gel for your, like, or gel. Oh, okay. And, uh, man, that was nice. Hmm. Have you gotten uh, those cereals yet? No, they come Saturday. Mm, you gotta let us know, cause yeah, uh, Coco, Coco is real interested. I got. Bunny Bennett. <laughs> Bunny Bennett uh, endorses them. And oh, okay. Not, not officially, she just really likes the cereal and was like, yeah. Sure, yeah. Like her and David are both like super healthy, by my understanding. Like they they eat super healthy. And like are very careful because like their their job is as performers. So, um, as I as uh, my favorite music YouTuber Sideways says, uh, much as I hate to admit that vocalists are right about something, your body is your instrument when you're a vocalist. And so, because that is their entire life, they have to be real freaking healthy. Yeah. And so. It, it, it's it's a cereal that you know. Oh, I got a survey from them today. Really? Yeah, because I bought some, and I guess they expected it to have already been here by now. But yeah, it's it always was, awkward. It was asking what flavors I would like to see next from a list, or really? if I had my own suggestion. Oh, now that's and, so okay. There. What were the three you got, and what other options were there? Or no, you got four, right? Yeah, you got to buy them by the four pack. So okay, I got the multi pack. Okay. Oh, so, so are they like packaged. packaged in specific sets, or can you mix and match? Yeah, I think you can mix and match, but don't quote me. Okay. But there are pre-made sets. So I got blueberry cereal, Fruity mm -hmm. Loops. Mm -hmm. Like basically Fruit Loops. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna call them by what you you know them to be the copy of. Oh sure. So I got I got Fruit Loops. I got uh blueberry cereal, which I mean I guess maybe blueberry or the blueberry Cheerios, which are delicious. Um, I love blueberry cereal. Um. Oh, absolutely. They got the blueberry Ego cereal, which um that stuff is pretty solid. If I can't get blueberry, my second favorite is the blueberry Cheerios. So I got yeah, I got the chocolate cereal, the fucking Fruit Loops, the blueberry cereal, and I think the last one was like, uh, shit, what was the last one? Ah, man, I fucked up my shoulder. Oh, and I don't right. know what I did. Yeah, but I don't know what I did. Why'd you do this? Uh, don't tell me what, I just need to know why. Frosted Flakes. Frosted Flakes. That's the fourth mm. one. That's so pretty it's solid. Blueberry, Chocolate, Frosted Flakes, Fruit Loops. Nice. And the, they have, like, mazes on the back, and oh, it nice. looks really good, and it's so, like... When I was it, a kid, I don't it remember... It's um, no Magic Spoon, if you're listening, sponsors, please. Uh... It totally taps into, like, my uh, aesthetic and nostalgia at the same time. Mm. Oh. Um, when I was a kid, my grandma would get these... Um, she'd get these cereals that were specifically... Um, that was specifically, like, a vegan cereal that had, like, an alligator mascot... And they'd have, like, mazes on the back and stuff, but it was basically, like, knockoff Cocoa Puffs that were, like, dark chocolate. I don't remember what they were called, but they were, like, really good. That sounds amazing. They were, like, way more uh -huh. fudgy than real Cocoa Puffs. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's delicious. Hmm. We also had puffins all the time, which are... Imagine if Captain Crunch was like four times harder and cinnamon flavored. That's puffins. Ah, uh, okay. They break uh, your fucking teeth. 
But, uh, they do have other flavors besides the four I mentioned. Uh-huh. Um, they have... Let me pull it up. They've got... Shit. I am fucking baked. They've got nutty, fruity, cinnamon, blueberry, cocoa, and frosted. Nutty would be like, uh... Two boxes of peanut butter flavored and two boxes of honey nut flavored. Ooh. And uh, they're one of the options on what flavors you'd like to see. It was a chocolate peanut butter flavor. Uh, yep, yep. That's the, I, I'm not a huge fan of peanut butter in general, but something about chocolate peanut butter. Uh, I'm not a fan of that kind of cereal. Really? But my girlfriend is, and she would have broken my fingers if I didn't click that. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that I saw that I was really excited for was what non cereal things would you like to see us make? Oh, uh, Pop Tart. Pop Tart. I said that! I specified the proper best flavor s'more. S'more's pretty good. I, I, I'd say s'more, s'more is pretty solid, but sometimes just a classic frosted blueberry. You know? Strawberry and blueberry are very. Like. Equal I also, second. it's a bit, it's a bit of a nostalgia thing, but the wild berry, that super 90s looking like purple with the green stripe, or the, the blue stripe? Teal stripe. Teal. teal stripe, yep. Okay, so I was kind of right the, and wrong. <laughs> which was super cool living in Charlotte when it came out, mm. because that was the Carolina, or the Charlotte Panthers colors. Oh, sick. Oh, that is my color aesthetic, like, ooh, I love those colors. Mm. So much so that we built uh, some dressers over here, and I'm gonna backlight them with orange or purple and teal. Fuck yeah! One over two says rip your mouth, which I'm pretty sure is in regards to the puffins. And like, yeah, yeah, they were like, they're like so hard. They are t tasty, but you have to, you have to really have some strong teeth because those things will s crunch them. Um, unless you get the peanut butter ones are a little puffier, so they're not quite as ridiculous, but they will tear up the roof of your mouth. Oh shit, I dropped you. Oh god. No, pick me back up. Pick me up. Pick me up. Pick me. God, you know what's really great while being high? Hmm. I mean, um, not high, because I'm Dr like, drunk without alcohol. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, is the Google TV, like, uh, sli screensaver slideshow? Oh, yeah, with, like, the, the, like, back, the, um, the buildings? Like, buildings, Chinese lanterns. Yeah, you can uh, see the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, like, ducked into a window in part of those. Really? Yeah. I mean, if we're talking Roku, right? No, 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 I'm on, uh, Chromecast. Okay, I'm talking about like the Roku screensaver with like the city skyline. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can see you can see three of them. They don't have yeah. all four, but they're clearly supposed to be the Ninja Turtles. Yeah, there's a lot of references in those. Oh yeah, you can see like Stark Tower or well the Avengers Tower, I guess at one point. Uh, you can see Godzilla, Godzilla Space uh, Needle. The aliens from the robot aliens from the day the Earth stood still. Oh, I th I might have seen that. I've looked at it so many times now. It's so. This game is very dark. WWE is uh, pissed at AEW. When aren't they? Like they they may not say they are, but they clearly always, if not often, are. But no. So oh, before I get to that, the uh, Chromecast backgrounds are. Like Chinese lanterns, uh, waterfall right now that's really gorgeous. Right. Uh, summer fantasy skate artwork, you know things like that. Yeah. It's just so relaxing when you're high. Sure. All right, back to uh, AEW. Uh, WWE is pissed at them right now because of Taz's promo last night. Right. He said, he was talking to Moxley and said, if you decide to get your ass to work next week, you would get tested again here in AEW because, John, as you know, we don't run a sloppy shop. 
Damn. And WWE is pissed at that. Oh my god, yeah, I I did not pay enough attention to that promo. Um Dude. that 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 shit was great. And then oh, oh. Uh do you have that uh article with the Facebook post from EC3? Oh, I can pull it up, baby. Oh, read it. Read it for the for the people. This is that hilarious. Really good. So he's teasing going to uh, AEW, mm -hmm. and he does it in perhaps the best post of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see if I can find it. Andrew Star, let's see night of spoiler. Uh, I guess I have to search EC3. No. I'm still reeling over uh, yesterday's news that Kane is uh, not supporting masks. Uh, ridiculous. All right, here's the EC3 uh, quote. Mm -hmm. You could spend your whole life letting people tell you what to do, dictate your path, choose your fate. Do you decide your future or is it chosen for you? We are living in unprecedented times with lockdowns, quarantines, terror in the streets. We are living an American nightmare. From coast to coast, Maine to SoCal, uncensored chaos and confusion reign supreme. You could walk outside and it feels like you're in the jungle, boy. You fear the revolt is coming to get you if you don't adhere to the brute thinking. You feel like you're left out to hang, man. The natural state of things has fallen into the dark order, and you plug away day after day after day like a gear in an effing machine. Society is broken, but now is the time you keep your inner circle small. You do not have best friends. You can only trust yourself. And it doesn't matter if you're an old man or a young buck. You speak your truth. You stand tall, exalted. You're, you rise like a phoenix. You carry yourself with moxie and seal it with a sunny kiss. Now these bastards may criticize you. They may mock you. They may cancel you. Hell, they may even imitate you poorly. But you never give in. You never apologize. You put the word sorry back into the dictionary. You throw it into the library, into its face, because it is never the end. There is no omega when you are an alpha. You think for yourself. You fight for yourself. You control your own narrative. And if you don't, then you're just part of the con. You're more than elite. You are free, and they have been warned. And just like... So, so are we sure he's not going to Impact? He's apparently signed with Impact. Really? Which is very interesting news. Huh. Um, I wonder if... Uh, but wait, if he's signed, what if it's teasing, like, an AW cross Impact, like... Yeah. Like, crossover. That's, that's very up. clearly... AEW. He has now teased moves to both Impact and AEW, oh. much like Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows. So, could mm. this mean the two promotions have a working relationship, allowing wrestlers to appear on both promotions? If so, I'm not interested. I really don't. If they're, well, if they're. Uh, maybe not even necessarily that, but like, maybe it's just that they recognize that those are the two places that most want them, so they're just trying to, like, tease it out to maybe put enough fear in the other one to give them a better contract. Yeah, uh, Randy Orton did that recently. Sounds, uh, sounds a lot about of right. With AEW out there, a lot of wrestlers were doing that pre-pandemic mm -hmm. because, uh, like, Undertaker accidentally did that. He didn't oh, no. actually want a better contract, but he was uh, supposed to appear at StarCast at all, or double or nothing, and WWE pitched a fucking fit and oh, of course just gave him a better, like offered him a better contract and had him re-sign and not go. Mm. Even though at the time he was still under contract to WWE. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is that, like, WWE at this point, their strategy is just panic and try and like buy their way out into being more wanted because literally all they might have is money so much of the other stuff that the other companies and especially aw are offering is so much more desirable yeah 
Though I will say, I have a critique of AEW if a report I saw today was true. Oh no. Uh, they had extra fans in the audience in the upper bowl. Oh no. And they did not test those people for the virus. Oh, come on, uh, guys. What they instead did was had they did the temperature tests and had them socially distanced in the crowd, well, like in the bowl. I guess, but like so, at this point, at this, like maybe a few weeks ago when we, when it seemed like it might be okay, it wasn't. It definitely wasn't. We started reopening way too early. Um, but. Like, maybe back then, they would have had a somewhat innocent excuse of, like, oh, we didn't know. But, like, now, when it's already w back on the rise and they're in an epicenter, I just... Yeah. Ugh. Oh, it's, that's they, not good, guys. I'm hoping it's not true. Right. Um, because it is, you know, kind of fucked up, in my opinion. Oh, it's very, quite but, fucked up. But, I mean, at least it's open air, at least it's social distanced. Right, and if everybody is wearing masks, then, like, social distance masks, open air, very low chance. Still probably not something anybody should be risking, though. Also, there's a political cartoon that shows, uh, like, doughy... You know, older cop looking kind of guy. Oh, I think I saw this one, but yeah, it continues describing. And a uh, giant Frankenstein's monster labeled crime. And it says, Who would you prefer patrolling your neighborhood? Mm -hmm. And somebody replied with, um, cr Actually, his name is Crimes Monster. <laughs> um, here's the thing that you would want the Frankenstein's monster because. The monster was forced into being a criminal by the opinions of others, not by actions of his own. Yeah. He was labeled a criminal because he looked different when all he wanted was to be left alone in peace. That is literally... You could not pick a better fucking allegory to show how disconnected you fucking are from the problem. <sighs> Boy, oh boy. It's so... I love it when they own themselves. Yeah. Also, but, real uh, talk, if they wanted them to look threatening, going with one of the most, like, generic Halloween monsters was not a way to look make it, the issue look like it was a scary thing. Yeah. I'm... He did kill people, but that happened after people freaked out. About yeah, but so did Dracula and the mummy and shit. But it's like, if you see them, you're just like, that's not scary. That's just like, it's like kids Halloween shit. Like, it yeah, can be scary in the right, in the right uh, uh, context, I guess. In the right hands, but those are very few and far between these days. I prefer Edward Scissorhands. It's the same story, but he's got scissors on his hands. And it stars the lovely Vincent Price. Eh. I like Winona Ryder dancing in the snow. And mainly I like the Game Grumps referencing that quite often, because it's hilarious. I'm not a big Tim Burton fan. He's a bit of a... He's problematic. Oh, we'll certainly. Put it that way. The thing and, is, um, the thing that's frustrating to me is I, I used to be a huge fan of his stuff growing up, especially like Nightmare Before Christmas, classic, right? But um, the thing is, if you go back to when he like, when he was like gonna release Sleepy Hollow, which I will attest is still a pretty solid horror movie. Like it's pretty scary. Um, like, he was, he was clearly, like, just this art house dude. He wore, like, ill-fitting suits. He had crazy hair. And, like, he was just kind of, like, um, he was just, like, clearly this nervous, like, art kid. And then, like, similar to Johnny Depp, he, who they've worked together, like, if you go, there's, like, an, 
an interview where they had Tim Burton interview Johnny Depp. Or maybe, I think they were interviewing each other. Um, then, uh, like, they're both just so Hollywood. And Tim Burton is just, like, this, like, coked out snob in, like, thousand dollar sunglasses just slouched back in his chair like yeah how did you like being um it a tanto in my movie it's like this, this guy is just everything wrong with hollywood and what it does to people yeah i can't remember the last big name movie i went to see birds of prey birds of prey what did you think of that yeah? I loved it. Good. Okay. Finally. Yeah, We've been at odds great. with our, like, in like lately, anytime I say, I'm like, oh, this thing's awesome, you're like, eh. And then you're like, oh, this thing's awesome, I'm like, eh. But finally, we can agree, Birds of Prey was great. Yeah, it was a lot better than people made it out to be. Like, I understand, like, I remember people pissed, like, oh, why do you have to call it Harley Quinn in the Birds of Prey? It was a Harley Quinn movie. Well, yeah, and it, like, that's the, the reason why, like, they they changed the title. The original one was Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous right. Emancipation of One Harley Quinn, which not only harkens back to an older titling style that I wish would come back of just fucking huge titles like that. I just like long titles. I don't know. They... they they make it makes me think of like classic literature, where like each chapter title would be, in this chapter, Gardevoir goes about his day and learns something about his friend, Charuse, and then they both have a picnic and decide that things will be just fine. And half of the time it would like spoil big twists that were supposed to be read in the chapter, so it'd just be a paragraph of title. I liked that all right, but like after seeing the movie. You'd have to be kind of crazy to have thought that the first title should have been Birds of Prey. Because yeah. they were barely the Birds of Prey. And it was barely featuring most of them, except Harley for the yeah. and majority I mean, they were, of the movie. Yeah, they were there, but like... And like, it was kind of focusing on them, but it was clearly Harley Quinn's story. And they, they were there as just part of her story. Whereas if they make a sequel, maybe they'll focus more on another character. Yeah. Or the team as a whole, but... Yeah. I think it was fine, and I think that's what it should have been called, and I think it was a great movie, and... Like, it's... It was just really good, and... Like, you can... The people that complain about that movie, either A, have just no joy in their souls, or B, think that the 90s was when comics hit their apex, and everything that's not a return to that is just the shits. So, why can't yeah. we go back to when, when did comics get so political? At their inception. It wasn't oh. until the 90s they became just jingoistic bullshit gun gun shoot em ups because of Rob Liefeld and his fucking influence on the genre. Yep. Uh, one over two <laughs> says, uh, I still don't get how Depp was allowed to play Tonto. Yeah, that was messed up. And they shouldn't have done it, but in reality, they they did it because they don't care. They don't really care about natives getting actual like representation. All they all they really care about is making their movie that I mean the the original property was pretty racist to begin with, so like it's not as far as I'm concerned, even the concept of adapting that like was a bad move to begin with. Because it, you, it's so deeply ingrained in the like the plot and world that there's no way that you could remove it without making something that may as well be its own thing. Yeah. Um. I think it was fine. I'm sorry. I'm really high. <laughs> My focus is. Fine. What? Did you see Lone Ranger? No. Oh, that's what we were talking about. Long yeah, range. okay, uh, I was gonna say, like, yeah, when I, I... Just making sure that you understand what you're saying is fine. Uh... Lone Ranger was crap. 
like just in the inceptionary idea. I get what they were going for. I understand they were trying to hit that nostalgia, but it's not a nostalgia that the general public needs right now. Nor is it want. a nostalgia that the general public has right now. Like that that movie, it's, the Lone Ranger hadn't been popular in like many many decades. And to those whom to whom it was. They were kind of the problematic people. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, one, the one points out the original property had uh, had Tonto played by an actual Native American. It's like, yeah. And then this modern adaptation didn't, which makes it even worse that they were that they were more racist than that original property from so long ago. Yeah. The whole thing was just a, uh, a terrible idea. Yeah. Um, for me, just the, like, I've watched, I've listened to the old radio show. Mm -hmm. It's not that great. Like, no, it's just a Western. Uh, it's like, if you've ever listened to old time radio shows. Oh, from the United States. oh, you know, what's an awesome thing for that. Um, Oldtimeradio.com. That's one. Uh, but also, there's a radio station in Seattle called Kixie 880. It's uh -huh. a it's an AM station, and they play oldies music. And then like every night at I believe eight o'clock, eight eight o'clock, I think, um, eight o'clock Pacific time, they play old they play both old radio dramas and new productions of old scripts. There's a, a place called Jim French Studio in, like, Bellevue that, like, produces old Twilight Zone scripts today, and they sound really good. Um, and you can get an app. Like, you can listen to it on the web, on the browser, if you just go to uh, kixie.com. And there is an app, at least on Android, that is just a stream of Kixie Radio. And it always has, like, uh, like info about what you're specifically listening to and stuff. It's really Man. good many many local radio stations have such things especially I was also going to say I was I was going to say um as well oldtimeradio.com actually is the ones they sponsor the segment where they do the uh the old radio dramas yeah they're a really cool resource I used to do a lot of delivery work mm -hmm. so I was in cars for a long time right and that was in an era where podcasts weren't really at their like hadn't really hit their stride yet, right? Uh, roundabout, you know. About when, well, when was it? Uh, this would have been 2010, or actually, like, 2008 to 2011, 2012. Okay, yeah, that was, like, still, like, the early-ish days of podcasts. They didn't really, I feel, I would say that they hit their stride around, like, 20. 13 to 2015 especially when serial came out like that that was like a huge boost to podcast that and um welcome to night vale really brought back the old audio drama um itch i i there's so many audio dramas getting produced now uh independently by people in the hopes to be the next serial or welcome to night vale and uh I'll tell you, having auditioned for a few of them, a lot of them are not exactly professional productions. Yeah, some of them are really crap. Oh, yeah. Some of them are pretty poorly written, and also, like, if not poorly acted, like, yeah, the recording is awful. Because that's the thing, it, does, it doesn't matter how good, how well you can act and how good you sound in person, if you're not able to capture it correctly in recording, it, it's not really worth it anything and it's not that oh, hard to get good to... audio quality like seriously you can i'll say this now you can with a 50 dollars microphone and your couch just like the cushions from your couch and whatever pillows and junk you can find you can record broadcast level audio or at the very least audio that is better than the um than the audio you will hear uh on a lot of these audio dramas Sorry, that's just something I'm very specifically passionate about because it's something I deal with day to day. 
Oh, I'm, I'm doing one thing and then I'll be right with you, my love. Alright. <laughs> I was sending my friend the last clue in the sticks game where I do the counting mm. with my fingers. You're doing it to someone I else? I thought you were just using You're that my... as a segue. <laughs> no, hold on. <laughs> no, to turn on at 9 p.m. to hear the latest episode of the Lone Ranger. <laughs> the hell yeah. Uh, yeah, I've gotten, uh, I got Maddie with it first. Sure. I got you with it second. I got my friend Ashley with it already. Well, you got or me no, and Coco uh, at the same time with it, too. So that's, yeah, so that's what, then I got my friend, uh, Christy with it, and now I'm getting my friend Ashley with it. Oof. It's so good. Like this one, it's so good. I love it. It, like, I loved your question. Does the rule... Can the rule be changed? Yeah. You know, given... A t I was like, oh, that's such a good question. No. It's the same rule every single time. And you were like, damn. And you had such good questions that didn't help you solve the game at all. Yeah, that's the thing. Is like, it was purely because it was a misdirect. Because, like, as I was telling you, there's, like... A f there's a card game and, like, another... Uh, tabletop game that's effectively that, but every time you play, one person is deciding what the rule is. So while the w rule will probably not be as complicated as the one you picked, um, it will be like something that you can deduce. Although they can be as complicated as you want. Like it can involve Ashley like. Got it! Oh. Ashley got it! Oh! Your reign has ended, tyrant. She got it! Oh! I'm gonna have to give it to her. She guessed how many fingers are in the picture. I have to give it to her. That's close enough. That's close enough. She at least figured out that it was fingers. Yeah. That's the thing, is like, I didn't think of that as an option. Because I just, I don't know. <laughs> but did I ever say that the matches were important? No, but it's called sticks. And, like, they are the only thing that seemed to be changing in any significant way. See, that's the thing is they're like very clearly changing, whereas the fingers are much more subtly changing. So it's like a second order, um, it's like a second order heuristic. Yeah, she's the only one who got it. Cause I didn't get it. Really? Who gave it to you? Brian Brushwood. Oh yeah, that sounds like something. Uh, Modern Road. Yeah. That, yeah. that, that, I'm, I'm serious, that sounds like something he would do. Yeah. I, I did eventually watch um, his magic act. It's okay. Yeah, it's alright. It's uh, definitely... Um, it's definitely not what I expected. Right. And... Uh, like, it's not, it's not as big as, like, Pam and Teller. Yeah. And it's about the level that you would expect from that size and act. Um, I mean, there's nothing that's going to blow your mind. Right. You're, you're going to be impressed, and you're going to be like, how the fuck did he do that? But you're not going to be like, oh my god, that was like... Yeah, that's the thing, is like, in to bring it back to Penn and Teller, they're never about, like, fooling you. Their big thing is always, like, showing you the actual, like, craft that goes into it. So it's not so much about figuring out how he did it, but so much just seeing how well he does it. Right. And I gotta say, the off-putting thing was his fucking hair the whole time. The spikes. Oh my god, they're so corny. <clears throat> oh yeah. They were... That's what I first knew him to look like. Yeah, I didn't come on until like... Er, I think I saw some scam school, but like... Um, that Modern was him, Rogue right? Where you came in. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then when I saw Modern Rogue, I didn't see them as the same guy. Like, for um, some you reason. Know that, you know that he and Jason have a show on uh, Amazon, right? Do they? Yeah. Um, Ooh, what is it? Ah, uh, shit. I know the name of it. Um, How can I get Brian Brushwood Amazon Show. Uh... Hacking the system. 
Hmm, okay. And it's a lot of the sort of stuff that you would see on Modern Rogue, but with a better budget. And it's like themed episodes, like personal security, restaurant sure. versus... That sound, yeah, that security. sounds like the kind of thing they'd do if they had a YouTube premium series. I mean, that's pretty much what this is. I'm fine with that. Um, if you haven't... I mean, obviously, like, I, I don't pay for YouTube premium because... There's only a couple of shows. No, no, this is Amazon Prime. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, YouTube Premium, it has a very specific flair to it, but like, yeah. Uh, 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 Vsauce's uh, Mindfield was kind of similar to that by the sound of it. And um, that's kind of the only YouTube original I'd say is worth watching. Although they also have the Cobra Kai show, which looks interesting. I would be more interested in Good Game good game oh yeah okay yes that that i forgot that that show was uh youtube premium um that that game was or er, excuse me that show about games was pretty good good game yeah uh, have you not seen it no oh i'd say j get the youtube trial it's only like six episodes so you can watch it in one sitting uh, I had YouTube Premium for free trial, mm -hmm. and forgot to watch it. Yeah. I would say, I mean, just make like a burner email account and do another trial, and yeah, watch it. I did, I will admit, I liked YouTube Premium. Yeah, it's nice. When I used it, but I don't see right now in my life using it. Yeah, the main thing that I would want, because <laughs> often I will... Ads. No, because I just use an ad blocker. Um, I don't because I. There are content creators I watch that don't get money through Patreon. I so. I suppose yeah, um, but as Danny Sexbang put it, and this was one of the most like um, technical things he ever talked about, was when he worked in Maker Studios at the beginning of Grumps. He talked about how YouTube, um, the the people he worked for, because he worked in marketing. Uh, they were like, YouTube is not a revenue platform. YouTube is an advertising platform that you use to direct. You use the content to direct them to revenue. So that's why there's so many people who sell merch and so many people who have the Patreon. Because in reality, no matter what you do, and this was even before the adpocalypse and everything and every all the nonsense, but like, like this, th there's not really any money in... Uh, content or on uh, 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 ad monetization on YouTube, but yeah, I would say that YouTube Premium is probably the better way to support creators because you can guarantee you can guarantee that they get the ad money because even if you don't have ad blocker on, they might not even be getting money for that whatever bullshit company content claim them is getting it. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Yeah. That and the fact I'm sick and fucking tired of right wing bullshit ads. Oh god, yeah. I keep getting this one that's like, do you think Trump is doing good? Take the survey. Corey, one time out of curiosity, clicked that to see I what did, the and survey it's, and it's worded in such a way that it always praises Trump. Yeah, no it's always like, do you do you support Trump or do you hate freedom? It's like bullshit like and, that. And I clicked hate freedom and every anti-Trump answer, cause fuck him. Yeah. And then I, I tweet uh, like in the, like it had a. Do you have a message for the leader? And I was like, oh. The I leader. Did. God. Ugh. It's cr so creepy. Do you have a message for the leader? Uh, Would you like some juice? Have you seen this week's BTE yet? No, god I, damn it. I'm like three BTEs behind. I gotta catch up uh, tomorrow or something. I'm gonna spoil it. I gotta spoil it for you. Uh, there's a scene with Orange Cassidy, who I intend insist is uh, part cat. Mm -hmm. Because if you go back a couple weeks, uh, it might be the last one you watch or the one you're about to watch. Uh, they're supposed to be coming up with a bit for best friends on BTE. Yeah, yeah, I've seen a couple of those, so... So did you see the one where Orange Cassidy is folded up inside of a locker? 
No. Holy shit, really? Yeah. I mean, he's, he's like a small like... dude, though. He is entirely cat, I believe. Um, I mean, I me could understand that. Let me find the picture, because I had it saved somewhere. Mm. Oh, it might be on... Oh, I'm, I hope I sent it to Mitty. Oh, I hope I sent it to Mitty. Yeah, I'm, as one over two says, I kind of hate Freedom TVH. And like, yeah, if this is what Freedom is, then it kind of sucks. There's no real Freedom in it. As a... Uh, as my buddy Thought Slime has said, well, my, my, the person I like on YouTube, Thought Slime, everybody's buddy, uh, until everyone is free, no one is free, they're just in a more lenient, larger prison. Oh, man. I'm sorry, I'm entirely focused on finding a picture of Orange Cat City. I know I tweeted it, but I don't want to have to search through, like, all the media on my Twitter feed. I mean, do you think it might be faster to, uh, to just go to the video? No. No. Yeah. That would be slow. Ah, probably. Because I'm high. Listen, you know, it's all slow. Career. Wait, what were you on before? Uh, messages between me and my girlfriend. Oh, well. Alright. Well, I thought I might have sent it to her first. And more recently Here it than is. you would have tweeted it? I guess you Here do tweet is. a lot. Shit, hold on. Yeah. Hold on, I'm in a boss fight. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, I only have one heart left. I'll check it right after the boss fight. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, I hate this guy, because he's, like, big, and he looks like he shouldn't be able to move, but he's, like, way faster than everybody else. Okay. A snack. All right. Let's see, what do you have? Whoops, that way. Oh, wow, yeah. He is just, he's just curled right up. So, on this week's BTE, Dark mm -hmm. Order tries to recruit him by offering him Kool-Aid and, oh, no. and asking him to drink the Kool-Aid. Oh, no. <laughs> And instead, he just reaches over and, with the back of his hand, oh, my body went out. just slowly, over like the course of a minute and a half, pushes the uh, Kool-Aid to the edge of the table and off. I mean, not only does he not want to portray his friends, but you're giving him this shit instead of some OJ? And he just does it like a cat would, and they're like, don't you do it, Orange Cassidy, don't you do it. Don't you do it! <laughs> yeah. It was really good. You know what was the most shocking revelation? So, he was on a shot of brandy. And that mm -hmm. was that was probably one of the better ones, just because he kept asking the weirdest questions. Like, out of nowhere, just being like, what's your favorite episode of The Office? But, um, but hold on. Remember, where did he come from in that episode? He cut, they, she opens underneath the sink, and he pops up. All curled up like yeah. a fucking cat. Oh he's yeah! Orange. Don't let your cats under your sink though. There's bad chemicals. They gonna eat them. He's, he's orange cat city. Um, but the the shocking thing was she they made screwdrivers to drink, and she, right. he was just like, I actually like Tropicana little bit of pulp. And she's like, Oh, I got you the fancy stuff because I thought you'd have like high standards of orange juice. And he's like, Nope. What the fuck? He just drinks. Standard orange juice. What happened I mean, to freshly squeezed? You know what? I don't drink orange juice because it's super bad for you, but... Is it? Oh, yeah. It is super bad for you. Really? It Why? Is uh, all, like, fruit juice is. It's just sugar. That's fair. Okay. Fair enough. I figured it might uh, be I mean, something specific about that one. No, like, all fruit juice is terrible for you. It is not healthy. Uh, the, yeah. What makes it different from the fruit it's squeezed from is the fiber that comes with the food mm. versus just the juice. The fiber helps get those sugars out. Yeah, more I mean, it's it as in terms of sugar, like it has at least as much sugar as soda, sometimes more. More usually. Yeah, but the, then unless it's cheer wine, cheer wine usually has the most fucking sugar of anything I've seen, with few exceptions. Yeah, 
Um, oh, now that you're in the south, how do you like cheer wine? Oh, it's pretty nice. Is it I, worth being in the south? I prefer Moxie, to be honest. I don't like Moxie. Oh, it's good. It's good for like um like uh cocktails. You know, uh, uh, like a like a, a something with like a, a whiskey or like maybe even like a, a more sweet liquor. I don't nice. like sweet. I don't like sweet alcoholic drinks. Ah, uh, fair enough. I am, well, that's I am. the the idea is that the, the moxie isn't very sweet. It's like a little sweet, but it's still kind of bitter. I am very firmly a Bloody Mary guy. Fair enough. And like my recipe for a Bloody Mary. Which does change occasionally, but, like, it's a mood-based change, not a, like, forever change. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, half a glass of vodka. Like, a sure. normal, like, drinking glass. Half that of vodka. Add a dash of, uh, olive juice. A dash of Worcester sauce. Mm -hmm. A dash of whatever your hot sauce of choice is. I go with whatever's on sale at Publix. Buy one, get one. Hold. Uh, by the way, we've talked about it a little bit briefly, um, but I had that baked mac and cheese, and I was like, oh, you uh -huh. know what would be good with this hot sauce? And I remembered, oh, yeah, that CBD hot sauce Andrew gave me. Uh-huh. That sh I Here's the thing. The CBD is fine, but... The hot sauce itself is just really tasty. It's just a good flavor. And it's like, it's got, oh. it's got like a good amount of heat, but it doesn't come on immediately. It like takes a second. It's like a sharp bit of like heat. And then it just kind of mellows out. And it's just a, a, a nice soft warmth. That sounds nice. And it's just, it's ah. just a good flavor. That's the one problem I have with a lot of hot sauces. Like some of them just kind of taste gross. Um, I can see that. Especially the ones that are like trying to be super hot with like the Carolina Reaper and stuff. It's like, you're not going to taste it anyways. They know that. So, um, yeah. that was something I remember, I think Adam Todd Brown, like way back in the day on Cracked, did uh, an article where he and Gladstone went to this Indian restaurant and tried their challenge item, which was called Thal, so that you could be on mm -hmm. the Thal of Fame. And it's just like it, it, one of those, because uh, challenge items are always like a ton of food that you have to do in a time limit, or um, something incredibly spicy. Yeah. So this is that case, and the thing he said is like partway through, like once he's already had a few bites and it's just incredibly hot. Um, he was just like, that's when I made the realization that this was kind of gross. Like the flavor was just not good under all the heat. Because at that yeah. point, yeah, um, this is one we got, a uh, sticker mule, uh, who could do, like, on-demand sticker printing and stuff. They had for a short while, and they might still sell it, but, uh, it, I believe it was limited edition, uh, this, uh, mule sauce. And it's, like, a hot sauce, and the thing that's interesting about it is, like, it's, it's real spicy. Um, but it's, like really sweet. Like, they added a lot of sugar to it. Oh, uh, no. Yeah? Can't do it? No. It's more like a salsa flavor, you know? But, like, with a no. lot more heat and just, like, liquefied. Shit. You gotta remember, my favorite barbecue sauce isn't what most people would consider a barbecue sauce. Oh, yeah, the best barbecue sauces aren't, like, really that sweet. Well, no, it's a... Eastern Carolina barbecue sauce, which is mm. different from everywhere else in the country. Is that the gold one? No, that's Georgia, South Carolina. Mm, okay. And that's made with mustard as a base instead of ketchup or oh, tomato. Oh, that, okay, that's, I was wondering why it got that color. I hadn't looked into it too much. The best one is more like a, a juice almost, but it is made with vinegar Mm -hmm. Salt, brown sugar, and red pepper flake, and that's it. Mm, so the really like smooth, like kind of thin one. It's very thin because the vinegar is the body of it. And yeah. what you do is you make slow cooked pork. You can try and replicate this with jackfruit, but it's not quite the same. Uh, but you get slow cooked pork, peel it apart. It's pulled pork, so yeah. you peel it apart, and no 
sauce on it. None of that yet. What you do is you get a hamburger bun with sesame seeds, squirt a little bit of the sauce on top, not a lot, you don't want it soggy, then put your pulled pork on the bottom bun and squirt it all over the bottom bun, slap a lid on it, and go to town. Mm. Fucking best barbecue in the fucking world. I gotta say, I gotta try that sometime. The best barbecue sauce I ever had. I, I'm not gonna be able to track it down. I, or I might be able to if I took the time. I've thought about it every now and then. But back in high school, I was in one of the I was in Upward Bound, which was one of those like college prep programs that high schools would do. Um, and so every summer we would do a one summer quarter of two classes. Like they would pay for us to go to college and get college credits. Because we were in the middle of nowhere, so it couldn't be like one of the ones where you just start doing community college courses while you're going to school. We were just too far away. But they would also, it would be a road trip, they would also do like a road trip every year. So like, it would mostly be to Seattle, but every fourth year it would be to somewhere else. Um, but when we were driving to the the uh, summer program, we took a huge detour into Idaho to do this like, uh, dinner theater. And it was this like Western uh, dinner theater where they, like bef while they were making all this food, they did like this huge like parody thing of like Twilight if it was more like Dracula, which was kind of silly. And then like when you got in, it was just a huge like ranch hand kind of line where they just had like baked potatoes and like amazing Western barbecue. And the barbecue sauce specifically, like it sounds, it honestly, might have been pretty close to the sauce that you were describing, but like it is by far the best barbecue sauce I've ever had. And I don't know if you can get like, you can get it, um, like buy it and they'll ship it, but like it's, oh, it was amazing. And then like as you were eating, they did like a full like country band thing, played all the classic hits, like Deep in the Heart of Texas bunch of Johnny Cash and stuff um, they did at one point do a, a rap about Jesus that was pretty awful <laughs> so that part I will not uh, condone honestly but like the most of it Whoa. Whoa. Um, the... did, did it go something like Jesus Christ is my <laughs> no not quite that level but it was just, they literally were, they introduced it with like, we think the kids need to go to church anymore, more, and we hear they like this hip hop music, so we made our own hip hop. And it's like, they, they had they had a little bit of flow. They weren't the worst rappers, it's just that the lyrics were so bad. Um, It was cool though, the fiddle player, she like had like a glow in the dark fiddle. So like at one point during a solo, they just cut the lights and all you see is a, a glow in the dark like bow on a fiddle just zipping around so fast. And by the time she comes back, it's like there's so much dust kicked into the air off of her violin that it's just like ghostly apparitions. It was so cool. Um, I will say this, my barbecue sauces that I make are my favorite. Mm -hmm. But if I'm gonna go store bought, my Favorite to buy is ogre sauce. Ogre sauce, huh? Mm-hmm. That's my favorite store-bought. Um, but I prefer to make my own barbecue sauce in general. Sure. And I finally found a good source for a uh, substitute for brown sugar. Really? So I'm really happy. Yeah, uh, it's a brand called Swerve. They've got a brown sugar substitute. And I'm like, hmm. fuck yes. Because that is the hardest thing to find a substitute for. Uh, as far as sugar goes go, certainly. The hardest yeah. thing to find substitutes for with just like uh, dairy substitutes are yogurt and cottage cheese. There is no, there is no mass produced cottage cheese substitute, which my grandma has always bemoaned. That's like the one non-vegan thing that she misses. Um, but, uh, the other thing is yogurt. You can find vegan yogurt. Yeah. But it's weird. It's like really weird. I like, uh, was it so delicious? Uh, probably, yeah. I liked theirs, and I liked 
uh, there's an almond one that I really liked. I'm not a fan of almond stuff. Similar to jackfruit, it's just not neutral enough, and it, it ends up when it's like distilled for almond milks and stuff, it just brings out so much of the bitterness. I think the best milk substitute I found is Planet Oat. Oat milk's pretty good, pretty creamy. Uh, I've, I'm partial one... to cashew. Uh, I don't like nut milks in general. Like Cashew's pretty good, uh, it's got a high fat content, so it's real creamy. For a long time I was an almond breeze guy, but then I found out like how unethical the growing of almonds is right now. Yeah, Aaron Hansen going off about that, how much water it takes up and it's being done in places where there's a drought. Uh, California specifically, yeah. Yeah. And so I was like, I cannot ethically continue drinking this. Oh yeah. And I mean, it's fun. there's so many like substitutes. But a lot of them are always over sweet. That's that's the thing is it needs to be at least a little sweet because the plain milks are just like are really difficult to like uh, they're just really unpalatable for the most well, part. Like maybe if you have an unsweetened milk with like a cereal, so that well, that's the, what I'm using it for. So yeah, for that you could probably like get like it should supply enough that it won't be too bad. But um. Yeah, any like of the flavored ones. The one I usually go with, honestly, is just the Walmart Great Value brand, like I liked, generic I liked, soy milk. I go with Planet Oat because of all the milks I've tried that were. I don't like soy milk. It, it just, I just don't like the flavor. That's fine. I man. don't. I don't like. Um, I can't do almond milk. That doesn't leave too many options, like flaxseed milk or. Those are the most common. the The next most rice. common would rice would probably be the next most common. I can't find any of those around here. You can't find rice milk, really. No. Yeah. Well, the thing is, you can also make it really easy. Or I could just buy Planet Oat, which has the texture and flavor I want, and I don't have to do any extra work. That's fair. I mean, it's it's oh, it's crazy easy. It's just you soak the thing you're trying to make. Uh food process it with water once it's soft and then strain out any like pulpy bits or even leave them in like to treat it more like a, a juice which is really what they are they're just a, a juice with a higher fat content Cashews and almonds make my mouth itch, says one over two. Yeah, uh, I would say avoid those then. Sounds like you got a food allergy. That sounds like a minor, yeah, minor one. It's like, um, there was a post on Tumblr that was just like, the thing I love about orange juice is how it, it makes your like tongue itch and then makes your face really hot. And they're like, I think I think you have a food allergy. And they're like, is that, is that not what orange juice is supposed to do to your face? Hmm. Oh, speaking of orange juice, I have to say, uh, you did not mention the greatest brand of orange juice at all, hmm. and I am very disappointed in you. Which? The correct answer is obviously Donald Duck orange juice. I was going to say, is this motherfucker going to say Donald Duck orange juice? Because you're goddamn right. It's the best! It's really, it's, it's pretty solid. My grandma would buy it for me when I was little. And I found out Dollar Tree had it recently. Oh. And I went and looked at the, It's always I the Dollar Tree. The, the Dollar Tree in our town, in Kingsland specifically, the one that's pretty close to our house. Um, I think I mean like it's a few miles down the road, but like the one that's like within a uh, convenient driving distance, uh, does not have freezers or like fridges uh, they have like the soda fridges oh. by the, the things but the one in st mary's that's kind of a drive away it's a, it's a ways out um they there's always a really nice one like a drive away that yeah. has everything it has like all the frozen one. stuff it has like the oreo milk and your local one never has anything you go in there Although, and out. I found I found something really amazing at Dollar Tree, which are these uh, 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 Thai coconut rolls that are pretty much just like coconut oil, uh, like 
uh, shredded coconut and like uh, seeds, and it's like a cracker kind of, or like uh, the purulines, you know, the like. Oh, the, the like, kind of purulines. It's kind of like that, but it's like way lighter. It's made all with coconut and like black sesame seeds, and they're like, they're so good because like you'd expect when you see them, you're like, okay, this probably tastes like coconut because it's like mostly made of coconut, but like it's this amazing toasted coconut that's like a little sweet but just so like roasty toasty and delicious they're so good but they only come in these tiny bags and like i would i would buy like a barrel of those things because i can go go through them so quick i used to go through like cans of creme de pirouette like mm -hmm. several a week the hazelnut ones specifically Ooh. I would buy like five or six a week and go through one a day. One thing, they they don't have like the filling or anything, so they are just like the tube part basically. Yeah. But um, I mean, these might be a good alternative. I don't uh, I don't know the exact nutrition details, but they definitely seem to have a lot less sugar and they're a lot more natural. Yeah, when I was really unhealthy with my eating, I would go through like a crap ton of those. Uh, like, doing delivery work, you need food that's fast, you need food that's hot and ready to go. Yes. And so, uh, that usually just means fast food, right? And yeah. it was very hard to eat healthy at that job, and I got really fat. Yeah, like fast food, or like gas station chicken strips or whatever. Hold on a sec. Yeah. Um, yeah, like... I avoided the gas station food, mostly because I got spoiled on gas station food as a kid. Mm -hmm. And had, like, the best local gas station food in the world. And mm. everything felt Like, it was one of those that was an actual, like, diner as well. Oh, yeah, like the truck stop ones. Kinda, but this was more small town, so... It would be, like... A guy at a grill flipping burgers in the afternoon or flipping sausage patties in the morning. Mm -hmm. There was this spot, um, when we were driving up for a convention, I think it was the one in Baltimore or something, we found a spot like that in the middle of nowhere. Um, we found a website that was like, Carolina Highway Stops, and it was like, literally just listed all of the businesses that you might be interested in going along the highway in, uh, the Carolinas. Um, and so it said there was a big boy, and it's like, I've oh. never had it, and, uh, Corey said it's great, so we were like, alright, and it was like hundreds of miles down the road, so we were like, okay, and like, we started getting really hungry, waiting, and we're just like, okay, like, we're waiting, like, we see some other spots, but it's like, we're holding out for the good one, and when we got there, it was just one of those gas stations with the diner situation, which was still good, it was still really good, but it was not what we were expecting. <laughs> Now, this might be, that might be more nice than what I'm describing. Hmm. What I'm describing is normal gas station in every way. All right. And in the front wall, like facing the parking lot, there's maybe a recess about 20 to 30 feet long. Like, the length of the wall from the door to the, like, bathrooms. Sure. That go juts out onto the sidewalk and is glass enclosed in a really cheap awning style. And there's tables. And next to the person ringing up your gas is just a guy at a grill with a cheap, like, slide letter sign above it and a Pepsi logo dead center from 1984. And he's got, like, the red letters and numbers to tell you the food and price. And that's your, that's, those are your options. Right. It, it's that kind of place. Yeah. I gotta say, um, I've been eating pretty unhealthy lately. I've been like, uh... Everybody has been. Well, it's like, it's a, it's a, a part of it is that, um, part of it's their sink's broken, so I don't want to cook more than I have to until, like, the plumber had to be delayed till tomorrow. So I'm gonna hopefully get that sorted out. Um, but like... It's like that. I've been working out a lot, so I'm just like crazy hungry. And also, uh, partaking more recently in uh, chemical alterations, we'll say. Hot I just. Sauce? Uh, yeah. 
um, I end up eating way too much and getting like I end up waking up with a stomach ache. Yeah, that hot sauce will give you a stomach ache. Yeah. Ooh. I mean, but it's so good you have to put it on everything, and you, everything includes like ice cream and cereal and candy mm. bars. Cookies. Just drink it straight from the bottle, honestly. Yeah, you know. And so you just do a you know, beer bong with it, you know. Yeah, you just uh, you got one of those uh, soda can hats, but you just have two bottles of that, you know. Mm. Hell yeah! Just... Pop out the little, the little uh, little what do you call it? The little like plastic bit that. Get... Straw. No, no, I mean like uh, on the hot sauce bottle. There's always a little plastic bit on the on the mouth of it that makes it like shrinks it so that you don't pour out too much at once. Oh yeah, the nipple. Is that what they're called? I guess essentially. I mean, I guess, yeah, I just I never uh never really thought about what they'd be called. Either that or you name it after the sound it makes and the sound it makes it would make a really racist word, so uh I'm not even sure it's actually racist. It just sounds like it would be. Uh-huh. And that's doop 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 doop. Yeah, there's like a weird slur vibe to that sound. Just the word Duke. You're like, hmm, not sure I'm allowed to say oh, that. There was, um, there, uh, what was it? We were talking about something positive, and they talked about how, um, they were like, uh, they made some joke that was like talking about like how all electronic music goes doot, but then they were like, yeah, but that's also the sound ferrets make, so then they had like a drawing of like hell, but it was full of electronic music and ferrets. No, not Duke. I mean, yeah, that spelling would work. Duke as in D -U -K. John Wayne. Yeah. Yeah. But I was hearing it always as D-O-O-K. Yeah, same. That's That sounds more like a, the onomatopoeia for it. Yeah. Versus Duke, which is technically the correct pronunciation of D-U-K-E. That I, that makes sense. I think they're supposed to make a, a U kind of sound. Yeah, because but there's th an for the word for the modifier. Yes, but so also English is dumb as hell, and like otherwise. any any letters and combination of letters can pretty much sound like whatever they need to in the the specific word. English doesn't have its own words. It just beats up other languages and rifles through their pockets for loose adverbs. The one I always think of is um, G-H-O-T-I can spell fish. Yeah. Because G-H and cough makes a uh, or, makes an F. To that too. Yeah. It's like the, the G-H and cough is a f. Um, the T-I in like sensation would be a sh. And then uh, I can't remember the example for O, but there's a, a, a there are words where O makes an I sound. Yeah. And my favorite is the tough cough says he plows the dough. Mm, yeah. It's always interesting. Like there's the the buffalo sentence. There's also the. Yeah, I hate that one. There's I I can't wrap my head around it. Like I've looked it up. And read the explanation so many times, but it's like, it, it's so many of the the definitions yeah, are like antiquated, me. and it's like yeah, and you lose me almost immediately once you start doing it. Yeah, it's like, it's like the idea is that buffalo is the animal. Buffalo also refers to the place, and then like yeah. buffalo is an old term for bully, both bully yeah. as a noun and a verb. So you could say that buffalo from the city of Buffalo bully other buffalo from the city of buffalo by saying buffalo 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 yeah i just oof. there's and also like, there's one in chinese uh that's like ma but because chinese like the way that you um the the way that you say the the syllable changes the meaning entirely it's yeah, just like it's it's language. different like you just use different inflections of ma like eight times in a row and it's like a full sentence 
There's one that I sent my friend, so I have to look it up. Uh, but it's a French one. Right, yeah. The, um, on TikTok, there have actually been quite a few where they, um... Quite a few lately where they basically found, like, found that and make their own sentences in English it's... that basically end up being, like, just g g g g g g g g g g g This one is uh, the word... Hold on. Shit, I have to start it from the beginning, because holy shit. Um... Green. Green. There. Towards. There's. Right. Glass. Yeah. There. Poor. There's. Worm. There. A green worm pours a glass towards the glass maker around eight o'clock. Yeah. That's <laughs> that was one of them. That's my favorite one. Different inflections of she. I think I think that's the the newer one from the uh, they've been showing off on TikTok. But the one I always heard was Ma. But then again, it also I you could probably do it a few times with Chinese just by the nature of the language. And by Chinese, I mean specifically Cantonese. Um, Mandarin, I don't believe, uh, works that way. I don't know any other languages, so... Uh, you know Spanish. Not really. You know some like, I Spanish. Can talk. I know a little. You know, uh, conversational Spanish. I think yeah. that's what they call it. Uh, there's also, they always say like, oh, I know up to like a fourth grade level or whatever. What, what would you say? Um, the thing is, public education, up until I was in high school, pretty much taught like the same thing year after year, mm -hmm. because you only got like two weeks of Spanish class, if that. Yeah, and they and always, so they would always uh, like, uh, the the first like three months would always be just like catching up on what everybody knew. Yeah, and we didn't have that much time. Like I remember, the most Spanish classes I had until middle school and high school were uh, two a year, and that was it. Whereas when I got to middle school, I took French for half for one quarter, and or uh, Spanish for one quarter. I don't remember any of the French except for Al Bobon au Chocolat. I remember Je m'appelle Iggy. That's pretty much uh, it. Yeah, eh, but I, you know, picked up on the Spanish a lot easier because of the previous like stuff. Then I got to high school and took a semester of it and really like just nailed it because mm -hmm. we got actual like education on Spanish. Right. And then I went to college and took a course that I thought was, you know, appropriate for my level. And I was, like, way better than everyone in the class. And the teacher was actually like, why are you taking this one? And I was like, I thought that, you know, this is where my skill level was. I'm not fluent. And so I never really got farther uh, professionally in foreign language. I'd love to learn more Spanish. I really want to know more Spanish. But have um, you tried Duolingo? It because uh, they do a test at the beginning to figure out what your level is at. I've tried a few different. I don't do well with self-taught, self-teaching. I I have to have like an instructor, like an actual person. I can understand that. That's kind of why, like, when I I did Duolingo with Spanish for a while. And I was doing okay, um, but at a certain point, it started to feel just so repetitive. And like, I feel like if I was working with an actual instructor, they'd probably recognize that and be like, "Okay, let's move on to something a little more interesting that will still be within your wheelhouse." Yeah, or at least um, that'd be the hope. I I've I've tried some of the self-teaching ways. I just I'm not good at it. So fair enough. Um, for me, I do better with a person, and... and that uh, shit's expensive, I, baby. Or you could just go work in any factory in the United States. Yeah? That's not an exaggeration. I was able to practice my Spanish in every factory because oh. I made friends. Oh, yeah. I guess, yeah, actually, like, practicing yeah. with like, people. In the deep end. 
So I was really That's good. That's actually um, Garrett from Mega Sixty Four. He, like, he's their their effects guy and stunt guy. Um, yeah. He's, but uh, are you familiar with Mega Sixty Four? Not at all. Okay, that's fine. They basically are like jackass, but for video games. Um, they started out as like a public access show back in 2003, but it, it got rejected for whatever reason, so they ended up just starting putting it online, even pre-YouTube, and they just do that kind of thing, just like public in public pranks related to video games. But their, um, their, uh, yeah, their effects and stunt guy Garrett, um, he, like, uh, works repairing boats. That's his line of work. And, like, he loves doing it. Like, he easily could work just for Mega64, working on, like, short films and stuff, but he chooses to continue working on these boats, and because of that, because he lives in San Diego doing this work, he's basically fluent in Spanish. Yeah. Uh, when I worked in the window factory... I had a job that required a partner, and my partner spoke Spanish. Mm. And so we, he spoke enough English to, like, you just say numbers to him, and that's all he has to hear is the numbers. Sure. And then he knows exactly what to do. And so he spoke enough English to recognize individual numbers, but I spoke good enough Spanish that I was like, once, once the media, you know, I was hitting it. And he was like, you, you know, you're good. I'm like, no. And so he recognized I wasn't good. He was like, can you help me learn English? I'll help you learn Spanish. So I only spoke to him in Spanish. He only spoke to me in English. And that's how we got each other better at it. Mm -hmm. And then I found uh, my girlfriend at the time had her high school Spanish book. And that became a gold mine in that factory. Because, like, all the guys were like, can I look at it? Can I look at it? And, like, mm. and I found it funny. The uh, guys who all spoke Spanish would start at the back of the book and work their way forward. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's actually genius. I never even thought about that. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if it works, but, I mean, I would think that because you're translating all the same simple concepts at the front of the book, like, but the instructions instructions aren't in English or in Spanish at the front where they get more and more Spanish at the back. And so they were following those instructions backwards. I'm like, I feel like you'd want to do it both ways in that regard. Cause yeah, that could be hard, but they, I mean, the, you, the ideal would be if you work with it enough that you can understand it front to back. Yeah. Did you, did I set you up for that pun on purpose? What? The world will never know. Oh, pun. that was a pun? Yeah. You know it's something front to back? Mm-hmm. That's a pun. On. Like, it's like, I know it backwards and forwards. Oh, like, wait, that's... What it's they... A, it's, yeah, it's the same. Like, to know it like the back of your own hand? Yeah. I know it backwards and forwards. So if you know it... Or I know it front to back. Hmm. That's a, that's wait, a colloquialism. Right. But yeah, it's a well-known colloquialism. Well, yes, but is it a pun? Well, I mean, technically. Hmm. Is it? I'm so, I, I just, I've used it's it. Definitely to, dad, it's definitely dad humor. I mean, I've used it all my life without thinking about it. And I'm kind of playing a game, so I can't, my brain can't unravel that idea right now but a pun it, it's like when uh why the chicken know. crossed the road it's like one that's so ubiquitous that you don't even realize until later in life that it's supposed to be funny yeah so it may not be a pun but it's definitely a dad joke yeah uh, um man i need to get back to learning Spanish. I also want to learn Japanese just because it's a really beautiful language and I feel that um, learning spoken Japanese is supposed to be f uh, not too difficult. It's mostly written Japanese that's supposed to be hard because they have three different written languages. Yeah, and apparently like the more formal one is dying off because 
everyone has to do like text and you know typing and everything and it's not doable in the more elaborate uh handwritings so it's actually starting to die off because one number uh, two also says that's not a pun so can you can you explain it i know it's not going to be fun. i'm high God listen damn it. <laughs> we need your help andrew you <laughs> you're you're the the word smith it may not be a pun but it is at the very least a good dad joke okay which um, tend to be puns but yeah i remember that was something in evangelion was that Asuka was like failing her classes and she eventually admitted to Shinji is, that it was because she is really smart, but she just didn't know all of the kanji. So she just didn't know how to write some of her answers and didn't want to admit it to anybody. Um, oh my God. I'm sorry. I'm getting distracted by the beautiful fucking... Uh, I think Hiragana would be the, um, as uh, Dinon in the chat says, I don't know what fancy language you're talking about. Kanji is the most detailed, but it's not dying, um, as far as I know. Uh, but I, I think Hiragana. Uh, God, it was something I saw on Cracked a, a while back. Hmm. Might not even be Cracked. It's, it's been a while since I fucking saw it, but. Uh, let me search for it. Uh, God, I really hate this fucking visor thing. This is going to be my last run for tonight. I think after I, I die or maybe finish this, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I'm doing too great right now, but... um. Once I finish off this run, I'm calling it a night. Uh, through the door. Ooh. One thing I really like about this game is that, I mean, it's like roguelikes in general, but it's very freeing to just recognize that you don't, shouldn't really save anything. Because the likelihood is that you'll die before you get to use it anyways, so you may as well just try it all out immediately. Man, that might be a fucking bullshit headline I saw, but we'll, we'll go with it as an 80% fact. But it was something about, like, or it might have been somebody, something like uh, younger people's ability to write in that style is, like, dying, like... They can't do that. I mean, if not, to... they can't do that. At least, like, there's less interest in it. Similar to, like, how cursive, we should just stop teaching cursive. Because literally, not only do you only use it for your signature in pretty much every case, uh, but you don't even have to do that. You can put any, you can just do a smiley face when you make your signature. It doesn't have to be your name. Right. As long as it's, it's... consistent. And even then, it'll change over the years regardless. It is an acknowledgement of uh, agreement, not necessarily having to be. That's why old cartoons would have them draw an X. Yeah, because it's just easier than trying to animate them writing a whole thing. Or they would do it like super fast and then they would just be like one frame before they had it. Um, do you have an interesting signature, Andrew? Uh, not really. Like. I, I guess you could argue that the way I draw the A in my name is fancy because I do it like a star. That's kind of neat. Uh, for mine, um, it's uh, basically I always do 98 and then circle it, which is um, 98 is just my birth initials in a, a, a replacement cipher. Uh so it's just I H nine ninth letter eighth letter. So it's not the most interesting, but it's really quick, and it's a uh, it's it's obscured enough for my my dorky tastes. Did you uh, see earlier, by the way, unrelated, the uh, Donald Trump T-shirt? Yeah, that's. I, I, 
Whew, oh god it's just it, like it's not been subtle this entire time but they're just rubbing our faces in at this point because they know what they're doing they know exactly what they're doing and they know we have no fucking power to stop them and nobody is gonna care do you see the baseball baseball yeah no they sold a, a black body red stitch trump baseball with his name written in red across the ball hmm for 88 dollars fuck you first off that's way too much for baseball oh it's not about the baseball Well, no i'm just saying first off but then secondly yeah that's that's just more nazi shit they're not hiding any of it like jesus christ you couldn't at least go 14 dollars and 88 cents you know what i want to say you know, though really was one thing that was hilarious was we went down to yuli um a while back and outside of this one strip club also that's my final thing so i'm gonna finish up in just a minute here but um the outside of a strip club there was someone with a stand like you might have a lemonade stand or like a fireworks stand that was just a table and they were selling bootleg trump merch I think I went to Yuli. Up in Seattle? No, Yuli is like down by here. Oh. It's uh it's like, like, like the... right at the north of Florida, I think. Like is it a bratwurst place? Like sausages and barbecue sauce and shit? No, Yuli's a town. Oh, oh. Yeah. I was thinking of the place over at Pike's place, man. I was like, oh Oh, maybe. I never went to Pike's place really, because it's just always so crowded and there isn't really that much there like there's some neat stuff but it's all like super overpriced tourist shit like the first starbucks and yeah first like, starbucks um the, the which is tiny by the way if you go there there's just a line down the block there was one cool place called storyville coffee that had amazing like stuff but they were run by mars hill church which is like not a cool place um in seattle so I didn't want to support them. And they also had, like, a spot that had just, like, bow buns, which were really great. So I'd go by there sometimes. But that's just, like, right on the outside part. Um, We went to a place that sold, like, sausages and bar barbecue sauces and whatnot. And it was really good. Sounds good. Yeah. Ah, I can't wait to visit Seattle again. As soon as everything's calmed down, Safe. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to head back up there for a visit yeah, i missed that place like i grew up there and i actually like pretty much did so oh it's so beautiful it's so nice and, there's, and weed yep legal marijuana as far as the eye can see and it was great yeah um with that reminiscence, I'm going to call this for tonight. So thank you to everybody watching. Thanks to everybody who watched in the past. Thanks to everybody who will watch in the future on the past broadcast tab or on the YouTube archive, which you can find down below on the browser version of the stream. Uh, you can also find my Twitter, which is where I tweet out when I'm going live, my schedule for what we're going to play, which um, once that schedule is done, we're going to head, we're going to head into Paper Mario and I'm going to, I'm going to play the first three Paper Mario games and hopefully finish them before Origami King comes out in two weeks. So we're knuckling down. This is going to be some long streams. So if you're interested in Paper Mario or just interested in us, if we're entertaining to you, like come and check that out. It'll be, it'll be an interesting experience. Um, and then also my personal YouTube channel, which I'm trying to do more stuff on there. So ramp that up. However, however slowly, I'd appreciate if you check that out. I'd also appreciate it if you follow, if you're not, because I'm trying to get to the 50 followers for affiliate. And then once I hit that, we can do some really interesting things with this channel. So hopefully get there before too long. Andrew, do you have any final words for the people? Whether you think you can or you think you can't, I don't care about your startup app. <sighs> Truth truth all right good night everybody